As I attempt to build the Gmail Tower model from pictures, I want to say that please keep in mind that this is for 3D printing. So, enjoy the video. The Gmail Tower is an 88-story landmark skyscraper in the Pudong district of Shanghai, China. Technically, it is 93 stories, but these 5 extra stories are part of the needle and is inaccessible to the public. The tower is 420.5 meters tall and is one of the tallest buildings in the world. It contains a shopping mall, offices, and the Grand Hyatt Shanghai Hotel, which at the time of completion was the highest hotel in the world. It is a 5-star hotel that occupies floors 53 to 87 with a total number of 555 rooms. The atrium of the hotel is on the 53rd floor, and it has a diameter of 27 meters and is one of the highest courts of the world. The hotel is one of the few sections that are accessible to the public, and it offers business services, high-level banquets, entertainment, eight different restaurants, and different shops. Along with the Oriental Pearl Tower, the Shanghai World Financial Center, and the Shanghai Tower, it is part of the Luziazui skyline seen from the butt. It was the tallest building in China from its completion in 1999 until 2007, when it was surpassed by the Shanghai World Financial Center, which is located close by. The Shanghai Tower, a 121-story building located next to these two buildings, surpassed the heights of both of these buildings in 2015, creating the world's first trio of adjacent super-tall skyscrapers. Technically, it opened on August 28, 1998. This day was specially chosen for it containing the most number 8 in the year. The building is located on a 24,000 square meter plot of land near the Luzazui metro station and was built at an estimated cost of 530 million US dollars. The building has three main entrances, two for the office area and one for the hotel. The entrance to the hotel is on the 53rd floor as I said earlier. On the first two floors are several conference and banquet rooms, a shopping center, several restaurants, and there is also a nightclub on the 3rd floor. I have 340 meters above the street level. On the 88th floor is an observatory occupying 1,520 square meters and is considered the largest observation deck in China. Also on the land is an annex building of the tower. It is six stories high and houses several exhibition halls, conference rooms, multifunction halls, grand banquet halls, and a recreational center. The design of the building. It was designed by the Chicago firm of Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill, or more commonly known as SOM. The tower's postmodern form, increasing in complexity as its ascents, draws on the traditional Chinese architecture such as the tiered pagoda gently stepping back to create a rhythmic pattern as it rises. Like the Petronas Towers in Malaysia, the building's proportions revolve around the number 8. The number 8 in Buddhism is a lucky number, associated with prosperity, economy, gold, and trade. The 88 floors are divided into 16 segments, each of which is 1 8 shorter than the 16-story base. The tower is built around an octagon-shaped concrete shear wall core surrounded by 8 exterior composite super columns and 8 exterior steel columns. Three sets of 8 two-story high outrigger trusses connect the columns to the core at 6 of the floors to provide additional support. Each of the first 11 of these tiers above the base has progressively fewer floors than the one below and flares outward slightly at its top in the manner of a pagoda-style roof. These tiers also begin to taper inward from the exterior corners of the building, forming setbacks, and the exterior walls gradually take on an eight-lobed pattern near the top of the building. The final four tiers, containing mechanical equipment, step more dramatically in a four-sided pyramidal pattern, from which rises an elaborate spiral structure. The Construction of the Tower In December 17, 1992, a proposal for a 88-story skyscraper in Pudong was approved by the State Council of China. The construction work began on May 10, 1994. It was contracted by Shanghai Construction Group. Shanghai is not very suitable for building skyscrapers, 
as the city is built on alluvial plain where the soil is soft. Skyscrapers are more likely to sink into the ground without proper supportive methods. To prevent the sinking, piles must be driven deeper. The foundations rest on 1,062 high-capacity steel piles driven 83.5 meters deep into the ground to compensate for poor upper strata soil conditions. At the time of construction, these were the longest steel piles ever used for land-based buildings. The piles are capped by a 4-meter thick concrete raft at 19.6 meters underground. The basement's surrounding slurry wall is 1 meter thick, 36 meters high, and 568 meters long. It is composed of 20,500 cubic meters of reinforced concrete. The building employs an advanced structural engineering system of wind and earthquake engineering, which fortifies it against typhoon winds of up to 200 km per hour and earthquakes of up to 7 on the Richter scale. The steel shafts have shear joints that act as shock absorbers to cushion the lateral forces imposed by winds and quakes. And the swimming pool on the 57th floor is also said to act as a passive damper. The seriousness of the charges is supported by the eight cores of large steel columns along the perimeter. The exterior curtain wall is made of glass, stainless steel, aluminum, and granite, and is crisscrossed by complex latticework cladding made of aluminum alloy pipes. Steel bars provide the structural support for the glass dome of the entrance. The tower has the best elevators available. Two direct elevators operate at a speed of 9.1 meters per second that can send visitors from the ground floor to the 88th floor for only 45 seconds. There are also 5 to 6 elevators every 10 floors, which reduce waiting time to 35 seconds even during rush hours. Ways to get to the tower There are several ways that you can get to the JML Tower very much the same way that you will get to the Shanghai World Financial Center that I talked about in my last video. So first is the subway. Take the Line 2 and get off at Luzazui Station, get out from Exit 6 and walk to the station for 5 minutes to the Jinmao Tower. The subway is definitely the most common and is probably the safest and quickest way that you can get to the tower. The second way is by bus. You can take normal buses route 85, 774, 779, 799, 971, or 992 and get off at Luzazui Metro Station. Or there's a more simple way is to take the City Science Seeing Bus Line 2 and get off at the tower. This way you can see the city while you get yourself to the tower. And finally, the third option, and probably the simplest option, is to take a taxi. Taxis are a lot more common in China, and you can call a taxi by simply waving at any empty ones on the road. It should not cost you more than 50 yuan to get to the tower if you are living in Shanghai. The observation deck of the tower. The Jimao Tower offers the service Wonder in the Cloud. Visitors can walk along a 60 meter long and 1.2 meter wide glass skywalk without rails. It is located on the 88th sightseeing floor. From there, visitors can get a sweeping view of the sceneries on the banks of Huangpu River. The skywalk price is 388 yuan in addition to the entrance fee that you must have paid if you are standing on the 88th floor. Also. Only a limit of 15 visitors are allowed at one time to enter the skywalk, and every visit is capped at 30 minutes. However, you can come here as early as 9 a.m. and as late as 9 p.m., encompassing all sceneries throughout the day. My 3D printing overview After the failures of many prints from printing the Shanghai World Financial Center from the previous video, this model was printed very successfully. I was able to replace the thermistor on my Prusa i3 Mark III, and the printer continues to retain its reliability. One small thing was that I ran out of black PLA filament, and I had to use PETG to print the middle section, which has a different tone from the top and bottom parts. Overall, the printing time took around 40 hours with default settings on the Prusa i3 Mark III. Now that I don't have black nor gray filament, 
I will be using some colored filaments printing my future models. Hope it will bring some color into your lives in this current pandemic. So I hope you guys learned something from this video. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button down below. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye for now.